My topic is the mind doesn't solve problems by thinking about them. The thinking about them causes problems. Now I know that may be an original thought you never, you've never really had before, but if you take a look, one of the keys to actual real self-awareness is to observe, to pay attention, to notice um, people's conversations, notice your own thoughts, notice your words, notice what gets your goat, gets your reactions, what doesn't. You know, and, and see, oftentimes we think we have to learn everything from books out there instead of actually being an observer. And some of the greatest, what would you say, um, revealers of, of truth were people who observed nature. Uh, they just observed what's going on. It's like if you want to have a good relationship, notice the relationships that are wonderful. And then notice what happens when all of a sudden you sign a contract, an agreement with some person that for the rest of eternity they'll be yours and they'll never go anywhere. They're always yours or you keep them. <clears throat> and then you realize how then you don't have a good relationship anymore. You have a business somehow maybe a faulty business, but when you notice what's working and you also notice what's not working, it isn't that someone has to tell you about what to do or what not to do. You learn to trust your inner guide. And most people don't realize they have an inner guide. So what happens is we use our thought process or our thinking processes to solve problems and actually the mind, the thinking process, never really brings a permanent solution because this what we call this fake artificial false ego mind that we've developed this persona this information that we have where we've been making our choices and our decisions that's always coming from someone else from maybe books we've read movies we've seen television what we were taught in school what we hear you know in the news and all of this we take all of this in and then we're using all of that information that has been given to us not that we've noticed not that we've done our own observations not that we've you know really been a perceptive person but we're using all of that to try and solve our problems. Now, how we solve problems is like, I don't have problems. People say, what do you mean everybody has problems? No, they don't. <laughs> when you're allowing your inner guide, you call it your God within, I've, I've renamed my God within my beloved because they trash the word God anyway, because you got gods, little gods, big gods, you got all these, you know, big evil gods, nice gods, good gods, my God's better than your God. I mean, we've just, all over the place and so but I do have a personal relationship with my beloved and my beloved solves what you could call a problem when I turn it over to my beloved my partner my divine um, guide to solve it in a divine way in a way that's good for everybody and see what happens when we want to be right and we've got to make other people wrong. In that way, then we don't want the problem, the situation to be solved for the good of all. No, 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 because they're wrong. Can't be in there, they can't be good for them. It's got to be just good for me because this is the way it is, because I'm the one that knows. Well, wait a minute, what we're not doing is we're not really tuning in to nature. We're not really tuning into our inner self. I think, you know, years ago, Stanford University did um, a research project about uh, whether humans are really basically good or, or evil. Not, And with little children, they found that when little children, there was somebody needed something, one of their friends, or someone ran out of some juice and needed some juice or a cookie or whatever, the, the other children, their first move, their first instinct was to help, to give. And then they would pause and remember what their parents had told them about don't share your toys, don't give to them, keep it for yourself or you won't have any anymore. And so all of this scarcity, scarcity programming and all that thinking, so when we go to solve a problem or a challenge or a situation of any kind, which we find is, um, inharmonious with our own divine nature and inharmonious with other beings and nature or earth itself 
instead of thinking about it because you look at all these groups out there have all got their plan to solve this and their plan to solve that and their plan to solve that and what you can do over here you need a financial advisor then you need a sex therapist then you need a counselor for this then you need to have somebody tell you what to do and then in school you know it's like as soon as a kid goes to school they tell you you don't know anything anymore you never did we'll tell you what you know and what you don't know and then we get off track and we begin to, we start giving all of our power to others outside of ourselves when you have the greatest power with you always who is your beloved who adores you who doesn't have a heaven and a hell it doesn't have punishment and guilt and shame and and beat you up and burn you to to cr a crispy critter or whatever that may be and and this partner and you are what would you say in a sense co-creators of matter in a sense that how we do solve a problem take a look at right now anything that you've been really thinking about you maybe can't sleep about what is it it's the mind and we have divine mind and then we have this artificial fake uh, created what you call false ego mind whatever it is and um, divine mind is a state of not thinking and people say well you have to think no when you know something you know it it's beyond thoughts and you can use your thinking for specific things but what happens is unless you know how to partner with your guide within just everybody has their own god which is so cool when you really think about it and each one of us is like that only child and yet our source is connected we're already one we're already one but we're also different and, we, and unique it's called in in sanskrit it's called achincha beta beta tattva means we're inconceivably simultaneously one with other people and also different one with god and also our own individual self but you have your partner your divine guide your with you all the time and what people aren't asking they're asking a a what would you say at a uh what do you call it, like a, a search engine to get your answers we're asking encyclopedia will tell us we'll go to the library and then they'll tell us how to do this and that so what happens is the more we do that the less power we have because we've been taught we don't know anything and we taught that we have to learn uh, by certain, you know, the old psychopathic religions will tell you what's right and wrong according to God, but of course it's humans who are telling you what the, what the big deal God is saying. And then we'll have then the king and the royalty and the big deal people, they'll tell you what's right and wrong because you got all these laws and these rules and blah, blah, and everything becomes so complicated that people are so goofy they're using all these painkillers and all of these headache pills and all of these you know stuff to try and be able to sleep or to rest because of mind because they've let the mind and the, the and the body control them when you need to get back in control of your own mind and your own body and your own life and you are life and when that do, does is you know just notice how your mind what it's doing and and the mind in a sense if it's not controlled will destroy and it destroys your self-hatred and guilt which we will deal with in in some of our other uh lakeside chats and you can hear that nice waterfall in the back and you see the snow and all the the freshness of the the elements and being out here in nature well you have your nature and your nature is divine and you are part of the greatest power that you are part of the greatest power that ever has been ever will be and ever can be and all of that is right there with you so take that situation and turn it over right before you go to bed at night so you can let it go or or even you start out in the morning do some nice breathing center yourself in the region of the heart i can trust myself that's a really great affirmation I could trust myself or I know and I know that I know you know so many people say well I don't know anything no you know a lot but it's it's like the real knowing is beyond thinking and in that real knowing place is where all your creativity is and you turn it over to your partner and you say divine beloved however you call your partner within any name any choice you do 
is that would you please resolve this for the highest good of all and I turn that over to you and please then I ask that you um, you know you uh, appraise me of what that is and guide me and direct me in this and if you have to be sincere in that and you don't even after a while even have probably speaker ask because that divine presence is closer than breathing closer than your hands and feet because it's you're part of that it's 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 you in the totality and then let it go and then and and another thing is here's another little fast little thing you could do is give yourself maybe 20 minutes not to worry maybe a half hour maybe an hour and then keep expanding it and get into the feeling how would you feel if there was nothing to worry about ever again you said well that'd be crazy because there's things to worry about they're telling me all the time that keeps you scattered that keeps you out there keeps you frazzled keeps you so you can't empower yourself or anybody else and so give yourself a little time frame it's okay i won't worry for one hour and i how would i feel if everything was magnificent i don't mean my way i mean that it just all that I need comes to me all, all that needs to be there's harmony beauty get into the feeling how would you feel you say yeah but I'm worried about that yeah but you know what that mind you're using causes problems and will keep you sucked into them with no permanent solution there's always a permanent solution and it's simple it's so simple that people say, well, if it was that good, it must not be true. Well, that's true about scams, but that's not true about yourself. And that God presence, my beloved, your beloved, your source, your best friend, your pal, your buddy, whoever, you, your muse, whatever you want to call your divine presence. Just want you to recognize that presence. That's your wholeness. That's your unity. That's your palace.